Right, it's time to start cutting these up. Doing cross cuts mainly. But I will be doing some rip cuts as well. And really I should change the blade in this. I've got the Freud blade in. I can't remember how many teeth, about 40 or something I think. Should change the blade to do rip cuts. But I'm going to give that a go. See how it goes. I don't want to change it because I'm cross cutting, ripping, cross cutting, ripping. Let's see how it goes. Right, these are the end panels. So what I'm going to do is pick a front edge, give it a nice clean cut. And then I'm going to rip them to width. And I was going to go 500mm overall in the, in the depth of this bench. So I'll cut these to 500 and then these will dictate what width they get ripped to. You see I've just turned this one over. That was the other cut off that. Got quite a clean face here, up to there, but I might be able to cut that out or use the other side. But I've got a knot there, I want to see if I can lose, but it looks like it goes in that direction. But I think if I cut that at that, that's 20mm. That's about 20mm there. And I want 500mm. So if I work on 520 there, that's fairly clean up there, I'll just get that and just there, uh, I'm close, but I should be able to just lose that knot, I might be able to trim that off anyway, because these are slightly oversized. So that knot's gone, you can still see it, but instead of being on right on the edge, it's encased in it. That's a nice clean cut. So I'll rip it to width now. Right, I think I forgot to press record, but those two knots are gone now. I've got quite a clean edge. And sometimes when I'm cleaning things up like this, I try to think, is that going to be a usable piece? Either I take nothing off or I cut enough off so that I've got usable pieces of timber. And as you can tell, I've got a bad habit of collecting crap. But sometimes they come in when you need that, just that little piece. So now I've got a parallel two straight sides, I'll have to square this end up again and I'll cut that one the same. I'm just going to trim it just a fraction. See, boards are pretty flat. This one is anyway. And this other one, apart from the bits of ply from the packers, I got some glue on my fingers and then it was on the packers when I clamped them together. But it's a clean edge that, so I'll just take off just enough to clean it up. And then 500mm will give me. 
to there. So I should just come inside that knot. Oh, in my look, I'll expose some crap in there, but I'll put that to the back. That turned out quite neat actually. Might have to get rid of these. I'm going to do one day anyway. Let me see if the LEDs do it. See, the LEDs don't flicker at all. So what I think I'm going to have to get is shed loads, you know, a few rows of LEDs in here. So I've got the two end panels, I've just stood this one up just to see lots of knots but they're fairly clean knots there's a bit of junk there they can bleed out a bit sometimes and also on the other side the pith, like I say, that's the central growth that can be soft, sort of like spongy so I reckon if I make that the sort of seat cut out I can lose that probably that bit on there as well so I'll make this the front edge and I'll do the same on the one below put that on the back like that see there's a couple of ugly knots there bit of pith there but so again might be able to cut that out. The seeks come in 1800 high. 18 inch, I said that before. 18 inch there. So the seat will be there. So that'll be inside. So I'll make that the front edge. Right, I've changed my mind. It's raining. Got some pith there that I don't like. So I'm going to put that to the back. Make this the front edge. But that means that stays in. Uh -huh. Can't win, can I? So that's what I've decided. I'm going to put that on the inside, see if I can lose it, I'll lose most of that and the knots are on the other side there, you see that bit of resin so I'll be cutting that like that, like that so what I need to do now is mark where my seats and shelves and bottoms are going to go so I work to 18 inch and I've got one of the off cuts here, it's very similar size to the rest of the boards but I'm going to change that slightly when I cut the grooves I'll show you that when I come to it yeah I'll get all this laid out right, so I've got my lines laid out I work down because I want my seat height at 18 inch like I keep saying not 1800 so that's my seat and I just use the off cut just to work it out then I need a space 14 inch for the little boxes or oh, roughly that anyway. It's the same as what's on the other on the coat rack thing. And that works out okay. That gaps somewhat like the picture, that'll do. And then I put a shelf in between. Don't need to cut that one on here. Because these aren't there. These ones on the end there. Mm -hmm. I do remember that. It's okay. So I'll cut that one and I'll cut that one. And I'm going to put them in a groove. And I think I am going to let it stick out a little bit. Because once it's in a groove it'll look more like a more like a nosing. 
you know what I mean? And this is my best jig, it's got hardwood lips on, I know it's nice and straight that one. But it's not big enough for this so I've dug out an old one. It's just plywood. But I think it's okay. I'll take that off. Set it to this width. Which it is already. Mm. Not up there, must have been banged. Anyway, I'll set it to that width, but then I'm going to move it in just a fraction. These boards, you know, I sanded them, so they're not going to be uniformed thickness all the way through. You know, some of them are going to be a millimetre or two different. So what I want to do is cut my grooves, and then the board that goes in it, I'll sand or plane or whatever to make it fit. I'm going to be using a router cutter on that. A flush trim router cutter so the flush so the bearing runs up against the bubble and bollocks. I remember why I made this so deep? Because I've got I know it's a mess. Don't care. Good ones are still in the boxes up there. Aren't they? I've got in here that one that I used on the rented house, we know that's a bit knackered. See this jig's a bit thinner. That'd be cutting too deep and the bearing wouldn't touch if I moved it up a bit. I can either fix some more ply to this. And I'll be able to use this spoon then. That's quite good as that cutter. Looks a bit tired, but it's quite good. Or, I'll do a new one, see if I can get it Monday. New cutter won't go amiss. We'll see, have a cup of tea. I've decided just to rework this one. It takes time to make these, cut these grooves. So I'm gonna use this cutter. So I reckon if I stick a piece of 18mm on there, that should run okay. Got loads of scrap so I'll just glue it on, get it as close as I can. So I've cut a couple of pieces, a couple of pieces 18mm and I've offered them up against there and that is still a very straight clean cut. So. It's going to glue and staple that on. The neighbour gave me this Parkside thing. It's a staple nailer. I only put staples in it because I've got my other nail gun there. I've got my boss stitch. Got the boss stitch ones in the van, but this lives in here and it works and it fires the same staples as the boss stitch, so it saves me going out to the van. So, so I'll get this fixed on. I've only got 20mm nails, uh, 20 mil staples in this, so I've just tacked it on that side. This is half inch and 18mm, so turn it over, get it on a flatbed, get some more staples in. So this has only got 20 mil staples in, but it'll fire up to up to 40 mil quite comfortably. So I've got a couple of pieces of 20 mil scrap here. I 
40mm will be twice the depth of this, so it'll go in there about 20mm. Fingers. And that is a lot stronger than you'd think. Especially if you put some glue on it. And when he gave me this, I thought, oh, it's a piece of shite. But actually, you could do a lot worse than buy one of these. So now, you see, that's my pencil line. Put a little X next to it. Like that. This is fixed, this one. This one moves. So what I can do is set that to my line. I don't have to set it to my line just yet. But what I normally do is put that piece in there or the piece that you're going to be using. Slide it up. Maybe put a clamp on, but sometimes it's difficult to get that out. Tighten up the wing nuts underneath. And take that out. And you see your line there, square on there. That helps to prevent breakout. And then I can just run my flush drum cutter along there. Clean that out to the depth that I want. About 18mm there to play with. And I think I'm going to go in about 8 or 10mm. But I'll get this set up. Like I say, I want that minus a little bit. So that I've got to plane those boards to fit in. So I've just stood it up to get that board in. So I can push down. Push down on this top one that moves. That one moves. And tighten that up. Like I say, you could put a clamp across it. That one's tight as well, I think. I'll wiggle this strip out. And normally that would be a gap, like I say. But I want to come in a fraction, so I'm going to make a pencil mark down there. And one there. I'm going to make two pencil marks actually. I'm going to use the side of the pencil. So I know how much it's moved. But I'm going to loosen them and just give it a tap a little bit. Move them in just a fraction. So I move them in a fraction like I say. So that's too tight to go in there now. But what I can do now is, as I was saying, put that up to my line. And when I put these timbers on there, I made sure they were square, square to this fixed one on both ends, so I can flip it around if I want. But now I can set the depth of my router, make a cut up and around so like I was saying I want to put my groove in about 8 or 10 mil so I've got some 9 mil ply here sit a couple of pieces of that on there Let's sit the router on push it down till the cutter touches the wood lock it off and then set my step Set me depth stop. I didn't want it to break out of the back here. I could have put a piece of wood across here, but I just stopped short. So what I'll do is come in here. The cutter's cut in that way. So I'll come in 
that way but I might make a little cut first just to just to like score that edge so when it comes around it doesn't break out Let's see how it goes so I did what I said came in here first just cut it a little bit and then came around see how that looks Got a neat cut bit of the front because this piece is back in it. And not a bad cut at the back. Quite a good one actually. And then normally that would just slot in. But like I say I'm gonna I'm gonna shape the boards. I'm gonna sand or plane them to fit. Uh, I've just flipped it around because it's easier for me to work on this side plus I want to come in from the back this is the front and I want to stop short 20mm or something maybe a little more so I don't want this bottom running through I want it to sort of stop short I don't mind the top running over but I want this one to stop short so what I'll do is use this piece of wood I'll sit the jig on wherever it goes screw that piece of wood on and then my router will only go up to that point right, in there is a pencil mark to the depth that I want to go the, the distance so I've set my cutter to that distance and I'll screw that board on so that's the distance I want to go, I've just squared that over so I'll screw that on there then my, then my cutter will only cut up to there Uh, a fraction sharp, but it don't matter. Uh, I'll do that one. And I'll do the bottom one first while that's set up. Then I can take it off to do the long one that goes all the way through. Right, so they're both cut. And about a leaves just a little feathered edge along here. So I'm just going to go over it with 60 grit. I'll lose this pencil line that I don't need. It'll remove some of the sanding marks, but I'll go over it properly later when I've cut them all. Right, my new phone's got a fingerprint scanner, but I can't use it, can't set it up. That PU glue's horrible. I've got a box of gloves here. I need to start wearing them, I think. <laughs> 